Community engagement is really about community empowerment, I think. How can we reach out and engage the community in a way and share some of that responsibility and power that creates this new relationship where they have a voice in what we do, in our actual, actual policy, in our practice? Today's briefing is about is what we call Bringing Justice Home, uh, initiatives rooted in community. And the title really reflects our belief here at Vera, and I imagine the belief that everyone in this room has, that the delivery of justice and fairness and the delivery of public safety services um, is inextricably linked to place. As we begin to consider localized deterrence, can you explain some of the reasons why crime is often concentrated in certain areas? The standard approach to criminal justice crime reduction by focusing on individuals is itself criminogenic. Um, and that's what we've done. That's the million dollar block idea. Let's go in and arrest lots of people, send lots of people to prison. The answer is, I think, to target your criminal justice policies, not at the individual, but instead think about ways in which you can enhance that middle box, the community characteristics, the social organization of the community itself. To address that, in 2010, the Department of Probation embarked on an initiative called the Neighborhood Opportunity Network, or NEON. But it's also a way of working. It's not just moving our offices. It's coming into a community, reintroducing ourselves, to say that we want to partner with those on probation, their families, and their neighborhoods there's this larger value, I think, of engaging community and getting community to be a part and a partner of justice, not just a recipient of it, right? To make it a two-way street. We think that that's hugely important. Can you tell us about the link between family and staying out of prison and about this pilot program with NYCHA? Sure. Um, there's sort of this this sort of inextricable link between returning home to family, getting all the kinds of supports that families provide, and that that has positive benefits for recidivism, for reduced drug use, for um, obtaining and retaining employment. You know, the program was really built on what we know from the research about the link between family and, and successful reentry. And we know that most people are gonna rely on their families for, for housing support when they come out of prison. And then NYCHA is unique amongst housing authorities in that they have a family services department. So they actually have staff who can provide support to families if families are interested in in any kind of supportive services as well. Can you share some of your personal experiences with this whole system that we're talking about and how that informs the work that you do? The physical piece was that the young people got to see me and other people like me in probation who they know from the community. Like, what are you, a cop now? You know, and, and being able to combat that, saying, no, I'm not a cop. I work with, you know, I have an opportunity to work with some of these probation officers that you guys are dealing with. Let's sit down and talk and see how we can navigate through this and keep you on probation and become successful in the community. I mean, I've seen some of these kids get jobs and, I'm, and they, they're so proud of themselves just from being in summer youth. And, and then I'm like, but a couple of months ago, you was running around here with the hoodie on and, and talking about if somebody steps to me, I'm going to deal with it. But now you see a light at the end of a tunnel. People want to have an expectation that they will be treated benevolently by this legal authority in the future. And the only way you can do that is actually change the nature of the relationship. When people are actually treated with dignity and respect by people in legal authority that they don't expect, it yields bigger benefits sometimes than you would otherwise expect.